Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to be completely real with you and dive in to things that we have to encounter as a healthcare provider. We're going to be dealt with difficult questions, frustrated patients or family members. And as a healthcare provider, we come into this so open and excited to be part of the workforce, but we may not be equipped as we'd like to be to be able to better communicate and address these situations that we will 100% you know encounter in a in a hospital setting clinic setting any type of setting so if you're new here welcome my name is Tina nurse practitioner don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell let's just dive into it so in any type of healthcare setting we're going to encounter these difficult situation scenarios and we may see it at the service of um, a service recovery and sometimes when we look at that we think okay service recovery that's more management style like they're going to be the ones that are going to address the problems I can escalate it and have my charge nurse get informed and help have her address it um, or management will address it but the reality is is in today's world when patients are asking questions, they want answers and it starts with you. So if you can handle that and de-escalate the scenario, you are going to be at a better spot and you're going to be able to better manage things a lot easier. So service recovery is a real thing. It happens right with you at the bedside. So when a patient is frustrated, they wanna be heard is one of the biggest things. Um, they don't want you to intercept and they don't want you to say, well, the reason why that happened was because, you know, I have three other patients. I mean, they don't care about any of that. If there's a complaint and they just want to speak to you, the best thing you could do is not fidget on the computer or look somewhere else or act like you're busy. Just give them the time. Listen to them from the beginning to the end. And I think listening is one of the biggest things. Showing empathy as you're listening, whether it's towards you or towards someone else, you want to feel like they are being heard and you are being passionate about this and you're showing the empathy that they want. That is going to go so far for you, it's going to be so helpful. Um, so listening to them, showing empathy, those are all great things. One thing that I have encountered is I noticed that sometimes family members, they want to speak directly to the healthcare provider, say there's endocrine services, uh, maybe cardiothoracic services, whatever scenario it is, they want to talk to a doctor and they want to be informed about the treatment plan or maybe the results or whatnot. And so instead of telling the family member, okay, you know, when I get a second, I'm going to go ahead and page them. That may be perceived as, oh, they're really busy, the nurse, they're going to get to it maybe in the next couple hours. To close that loop and to gain the patient's confidence, what I typically do is I'll be like, you know what, give me a minute, let's just do this. Since I'm here, I'm going to open up the computer and I'm going to page, you know, Dr. Smith. OK, I'm going to page Dr. Smith and I'm going to address um, your questions because you have, you know, you have these questions and I know you want them answered. And I wish I could answer them for you. But because I was not in you know, the surgery room, I'm not able to answer that. But let's send them a text, a text message or a page right now. So then that way they can um, be able to answer your questions. So that's one solution. And typically when I do that, I'm able to close the loop because I heard them out. Two, I offered a solution, I sent a page, and they were in agreement with that. And so I'm gaining trust with the patient and the family member. So I think those are the biggest things that'll be helpful for you. Um, you may also, you know, get a scenario where the patient, you know, is frustrated because they did not um, go for a walk, you know, and they don't understand why and they want to go on more walks. And so you can you can definitely say, OK, you know what, let's l give me 15 minutes. I want to make sure that I have my care partner with me because, you know, you're a little unstable right now. I'm sure tomorrow it'll be a different scenario. But right now, 
how your walking is a little unstable, I wanna make sure that you don't fall. So if I have a care partner here with me, I know she'll be back in 15 minutes. We can get everything together and we can go on that walk. Are you good with that? Yes, I'm good with that. And so maybe you can set an alarm for yourself and have that alarm and communicate that with a care partner because you'll know they will be available and they are planning to walk the patient. That's another solution where you're closing the gap and you're making sure you are gaining the patient's confidence. So those are just a couple suggestions that I think that have been so helpful. Um, and most importantly, I want to overemphasize listening to the patient and not intercepting and telling them, well, this is why X, Y, Z. They don't want to hear that. They just want to be heard biggest thing I think it'll be so helpful if you find this content valuable be sure to give it a big thumbs up comment below and I'll catch you on the next one take care